Welcome everyone, welcome Rangers fans. August 31st, 1991, it's pennant race season. So let's get right into what's going on in this version of baseball reality. The last time I streamed was right before the trade deadline. So I didn't really cover any of the other trades going on around baseball. Biggest one here is for a no-name, yet a big name, Fred Wilburn, formerly of the San Francisco Giants, moved over to my rival California Angels. Really hasn't been pitching up to his ratings, but uh, he's a scary one. Uh, pretty good ace quality pitcher. Now uh, for pitching for the team that's chasing me. And probably the more disappointing part is the Giants didn't get that much for him. They got Denny Hawking, who was a very, let's just say, not that special player in real life. But he's pretty good in the game. Looks like he's got some potential. Uh, both He's got some room for growth in the hitting, and he does need to pick up his defense a little bit to be a real asset. Uh, and then they just got a bunch of a couple lower minor guys. Jesus Tavares looks like he might be a bench piece at some point. Um, that's not a lot to give for an ace. Um, so that was a bummer. I got uh, probably what I'd call a steal, which is rare at this level of trading. Uh, Mark Clear, who is an aging closer but still very productive. Phillies just really didn't want him anymore. They had their own fiasco with Wade Boggs that I actually had to intervene. They were trying to give Wade Boggs 100% cover plus a bunch of guys 100% covered to get nothing just to get rid of Wade Boggs. So Commissioner, me, just intervened and said, you're releasing Wade Boggs. So what did they do? They re-signed him, and now they value him. Game's weird sometimes. But anyway, I got Mark Clear. At the time, I was thinking he might be surplus to requirements because I've got such a deep bullpen show you in a minute. Not surplus to requirements. Uh, what else happened? A couple other minor deals, to be honest. I'll spin through them quickly. The Yankees got Paul Essemacher, which is kind of nice because Paul Essemacher pitched the, for the Yankees in real life. But he didn't pitch for him long. Did fairly well. Oh, actually, he didn't get hurt bad. He got he looked like he was hurt, but uh, no, just a, just a minor injury. So they're still chasing the Red Sox in the AL East. The Expos got a, themselves a fifth starter, and not a very good one at that. But based on his ratings, he should be a little bit better than what his actual numbers uh, suggest. They actually did have to give a halfway decent prospect, like not complete garbage prospect, to get him. Uh, Royals also staying busy. Um, they got a pretty good hitting catcher by the name of John Rabb. Actually, good hitting and good, good defensive catcher. Um, to try and keep the push on in the AL West. They had to give a pretty fair amount for him. Tino Martinez, don't get too excited. He's not uh, not developing like the Tino Martinez. At this point, he's going to be a, probably a league average first baseman, probably a little bit less than league average. And they gave up a prospect by the name of Derek May, who I think floated around the, the, the probably the Marlins, I think. Um, kind of more of a bench fourth outfielder type and a bunch of couple Lola low minors but that's not a that's a pretty decent haul for a free agent to be catcher what else the Cardinals traded for Sid Fernandez who's uh, not really been able to get it together in in his career you can see he suffers gives up a lot of home runs gives up a lot of walks and as you can see he's pitched for this is his third team in two years now nobody really wants him He's been pitching a little bit better for the Cardinals. Got his ERA under five. Good job, buddy. Um, they are still chasing the Expos in the NL East. Got a couple more here. Another fun one. The Yankees scooping up all the relievers they had in real life. Uh, and they paid pretty dearly for him. Jeff Nelson, who is a outstanding closer-level pitcher, goes to the Yankees from the Braves. Uh, they have to give up two pretty good prospects. Rudy Pemberton, who I can't uh, admit to knowing who, who that is, but he looks like a future starting right fielder for the Braves. They need all the help they can get. Todd Hundley is definitely a name I recall. Uh, not as good of a prospect, although he had that one huge year. Was it like for the Mets? I think he had 40 homers. Um, maybe it was the Mets. I don't know. Um, he was for the Cubs, Rockies. I think he was a few other, few other teams, but looks like he might be a 
maybe a starting catcher. Um, so not a terrible haul for a well, actually they got, they're going to get two years out of Jeff Nelson, so it's an interesting one for a reliever. And then I made one more deal, thinking this was a net positive. I traded Jerry Willard, who's just in a horrible funk, and he was getting he was really unhappy. Uh, traded him over to the Reds, and he's continued to perform very poorly there. Uh, I also had to give Buddy Groom, who's been outstanding in relief. I moved him because he was just not in my plans. I mentioned deep, deep bullpen. Uh, a profile like his was not going to sniff the majors, and he was already on my 40-man. And then Matt Franco's a nobody. Uh, got Steve Christmas in return, who on you know at the, on the surface he's really not much different or better than Jerry Willard. He's been performing a whole lot better. He does have one more year on his contract, whereas Willard's a a free agent. And honestly, I'm not loving the free agent market for the catchers. It's Rab, who we just talked about a few minutes ago, and Christmas, and that seemed like that was all going to be there. So he, I mean, he's been playing better than not great for me, but. He's been better than Willard. So the, the real gamble here is it's basically like I signed my catcher to an extension for one year, $1.2 million or so, considering they re, the Reds retained 10%. Is that worth getting a buddy groom for? I don't know. Depends how Steve Christmas plays. But he's 33. He'll be 34 next year. Uh, put together quite a career, and though it's not a name everyone knows, but three-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glover, won a Silver Slugger, won a ring for the Reds. He's got himself a good profile. So he's Jerry Willard with better contact and way better avoid case. Doesn't strike out at all, really. So hypothetically, he should hit far more than Willard did, which I could use. Uh, those are the two trades I made. So hold your uh, hold your excitement around, like, did I make some massive move? My massive moves were calling up players. And then the Angels got a... Decent middle reliever, Doug Shearer, who didn't pitch in the majors in real life, but he's a solid middle reliever here. So Royals and Angels coming after me. It's not going to work. We are well in front of the Angels still. 11-game uh, lead. Royals are completely out of it. They've hit a uh, pretty bad losing streak. Sosa is uh, in a bit of a slump. He's fallen pretty far below Frank Thomas for the uh Hitting crown, so it doesn't look like the triple crown is going to be. Jay Buhner is close to catching him in home runs. Uh, Damien Easley also been slumping lately, but seems like everyone else is slumping as well because he's actually crept up to second in the AL in, in hitting. And then uh, in the National League, really the big news is you see Barry Bonds slipping, before, slipping kind of further behind 400, but you also know some slipping in the RBIs. That's because he got hurt. He's out for the season, which basically makes the Astros toast. Um, so I'll come back to the pennant races in a little bit. I don't see any kind of record-setting performances happening. Sosa's fallen off the pace that you would need for a credible home run threat. He's, he's got a pace of 48 now, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get him to 50. That would be nice. But uh, what we're going to check out real quickly here is... Some of the top performances of the year. And then we'll also check in on some single game records uh, in this sim. Moise Alou still has the best performance of the season. He did it way at the beginning. Three homers, four for four, threw a walk in there, five runs, seven RBI. Far and away the best performance this season. I've got a couple Sammy Sosa appearances. He hit two homers and a three for four with a couple of walks against the Brewers in August. And he also had his three home run performance against the Chicago White Sox. Uh, he made an out in that game too, so not good enough apparently. And only four runs driven in. So that's why he's on the list. It's, it's worthwhile. And then on the pitching side, Roger Clemens still has the best one. Uh, actually, this might have been like the same day I streamed last time, but shut out the Cubs with one hit and one walk, 12 strikeouts. I don't think... Oh, you know what? We did, we did make an appearance here. Pascual Perez, three-hit shutout with uh, four strikeouts against the Angels. And I believe this may have been what kick-started my winning streak. I'll show you how far I got in a second. So just some of the game performances. Not, you know, the Moise Alou one's pretty incredible. Other than that, you know, Sirhoffs and Cal Daniels was really good, too. 
nothing uh, truly historical. Also want to check some single game records. If I can find where that is. Single game records. Um, so we'll just stick to regular season, like standard regular season games. And we'll go American League and National League. Um, I'm going to scan through anything particularly interesting. Rich Amaral was with me when he hit, had uh, six runs. In uh, 1989, woohoo! Bunch of guys with four doubles, bunch of guys with three triples. Nobody recent. Although Matt Williams had the four doubles performance is the most recent in 1988. No four home run appearances. Although we've had three three run home run appearances: Strawberry Sosa and Brian Deek of the Indians. Nothing on the board for the RBIs lately. Nothing on the stolen board base, base lately, although two of them came from this stream. Ricky Henderson had five stolen bases in 82, which actually would have been one day after I started managing the Padres. And then Rudy Law also had five for the White Sox, who he's still hanging around in double A. Walks, Mark Grace for the Orioles, which is kind of hilarious to me because I, I don't know if he had five walks for me the whole year. Mark Gillespie had five as well in this stream. A lot of guys with five walks just in the period that I've been streaming. Rick Stromer, Brett Butler, Carl Yastrzemski was still hanging around when I started this stream. Dale Murphy. A lot of guys with five strikeouts. No one recently. Lloyd Mosby is most recent. Nobody doing that craziness of walks in this stream. Mario Soto is the strikeout champion of the stream. He had 19 in the 83 season for the Angels. Nolan Ryan, these guys are all pre-stream. So that's the American League stuff. National League, again, nothing really out of the ordinary here. I'm just looking for stuff that's in our uh, in our stream, like stuff that didn't happen in real life. Moise Alou and Ty Ganey both had five runs in a game. Tony Barron, pretty young star in this, had four doubles. That was just last season. That would have been after he came back from injury. Benia, Eric Davis, Terry Kennedy all did it with two doubles in this in this sim. Nothing with the triples. Nothing with the home runs, although here's a couple more three homer games. Palmero and Alou both did it this year. There's been a lot of three homer games this year. I think that's, that makes five. RBIs, Russ McGinnis did 10 for the Phillies. For some reason, I feel like I actually watched that game or something. Um, could be crazy. Uh, Carney Lansford did it for the Phillies. Had 10 in 85. And then nothing crazy. Got a couple four stolen bases last season. Weiss and Lou, who really don't remember him stealing many bases. Maybe he did when he was younger. Uh, and Sheffield stole four. Johnny Paredes did it for the Phillies in 88. And a bunch more fours. And then is this Danny Heap? Yep, sure is. For the Astros, five walks. Bunch of guys with five strikeouts. Dave, that's Dave based Baker, not Dusty Baker. Dusty was retired by then. And then the walks, we have a walks record. I think it's Kevin Gardner. Yeah, very good young pitcher, although you can see he's got some control issues. The 90 season, he walked 145 batters in 165 innings. But he's got some talent, and looks he looks kind of like a right, right-handed right Randy Johnson, just not as tall. Uh, but we'll see if he continues to grow. But he's already got that dubious uh, 13 walks in a game. Not bad. And then uh, nothing in this stream for the strikeouts. So just some single-game records to cover. Back to the pennant races. So I'm going to disappoint you all. Right now, these races all look, except for mine, they look fairly close. Five and a half, five, three and a half. They aren't as close as they look. And the reason is all the second place teams really are having some injury issues. So the Yankees are probably the closest. Their big problem, I mean, you can see all these injuries they're having. Uh, Carney Lansford's out for an indefinite amount of time. Asamaka we talked about, but Tom Messier is their ace, and he's missing another week. And, I mean, there's only five weeks left in the season. It's making their chase of the Red Sox that much harder. 
But you never know. They've got a decent squad. But, I mean, the Red Sox are better, even with Tom Messier. Without him, to me, I'm surprised they've kept it this close. But, you know, 2-8 and eight in their last 10, they're definitely slipping. Cardinals made a couple moves, as we saw at the trade deadline. But they're dealing with a plethora of injuries. Matt Stairs, the young first baseman's out for another three weeks. Angel Escobar's got a sprained knee, which will probably hinder him. Uh, he is on the DL uh, for... Yeah, two, two more days on the DL, so they'll probably just wait for, he's, for him to be totally back. Cameron Drew, their starting center fielder, is out for the rest of the season. Randy Tomlin was not really a, a big contributor of theirs. They had just called him up. Big potential, um, but with an arm injury out for the season, likely out for the season. Their other center fielder that they put in place got injured, and then Joey Cora got hurt now, too, who is their starting second base. So they're just dealing with a ton of... They don't have the depth to keep up with the Expos. I'm going to call this race as dead, even though it's only five games. And then the Astros, I, you know, I already spilt the beans on this. Barry Bonds, like the franchise, out for the season. I give them no chance without Barry Bonds. So last season was remarkable in all the races that came down to the very last weekend. I'm not seeing the same thing here. The Rangers and the Angels, again, the Angels are dangerous, especially with the addition of Fred Wilburn, but 11 games is a lot to overcome. Despite, although we'll show you the Angels, they have, a, they have they're facing a couple of small injuries, Sanderson and Stelp in the rotation, but both of them are more back of the rotation type guys, not anything the Angels are terribly going to miss. They're definitely aging. This is This might be their last chance. At a, uh, at a division when you consider the Rangers and Royals will both come back. will be strong next year. But they've they got six games still left against me. But they need, they need something spectacular to happen. As for the Rangers, what is cooking? I think the first thing we should show you is how long did this crazy winning streak go? And the answer is 23. It started with... And 11, okay, so it didn't start with Perez. I think this was Perez's game. Started with an 11 1 win against the A's. We got three against them, three against the Angels, four against the Blue Jays, three against the Tigers, four more against the Blue Jays, three against the Red Sox, and three against the Tigers. And then the Red Sox got us in Fenway 5 to 4. So we didn't break the Major League record for longest ever winning streak, but we broke the American League record, and we broke it by three games. In fact, I have to look up the current present-day real-life record. I think is 23 as well. I think the Indians got either 22 or 23 a couple of years ago. But that was a highly satisfying run of wins, pretty exciting stuff. And then in August, we have done well, and... I think, I think our record's like 18 and 10. And the main reason why I'm so thrilled with going 18 and 10, because like, okay, that's not that great, is like, look at the congestion in this schedule. I had to play, I think, 30 games. This would be 31 games in 31 days. I had just two off days and two double headers in there. And boy, was it like watching that bullpen take a beating. I had to pull some strings, go to a seven-man bullpen for... A couple of days in there, calling up all sorts of new players, uh, just to kind of keep everything in, in check. Especially this last week, you know, coming off an off day, double header, another double header. Every, everybody was pretty pretty rough spot this last couple of week here. But uh, so we're still again, you know, lots of wins on the board, keeping that 11 game lead. We ended the winning streak at 11 and a half up, so we're 11 up, and we got this horrible congestion of games out of the way. That, to me, is a huge plus. So, what's cooking over here? Uh, I guess we'll check We'll check our, some of our players first. Sorry, that's OSA. I got this all messed up. There we go. Still sorting by war. The pitching continues to be strong across the board. Holman, Perez, Tappany. Avery's been kind of iffy. And uh, McDowell has been kind of regained his strength after a horrible 1990 season and a really rough middle of the year in 91. But he's uh, 
squarely back in the top of the rotation picture. And then the bullpen, still looking strong. I would say it's been slipping to an extent. I've got a couple injuries, and one of those injuries inspired the call-up of one Mariano Rivera, who made his Major League debut, call it a, three or four days ago maybe. Uh, he's already picked up a couple of saves, actually. I don't have him as my closer, but again, my bullpen was in really rough shape there for a couple of days. I was fortunate to get a complete game right back-to-back -back with a day off, and things are back to normal. But uh, Rivera is into the fray. Another pitcher in the fray is Dave Fleming. Uh, one notable name you'll see missing, if you've been following the stream, is Anthony Kelly. He's out for this year and probably next year with an arm injury. So uh, the depth is getting pretty thin with Abbott hurt, Andy Bennis hurt, and Dave Fleming was next man up because he's got uh, tons of potential. A little earlier than I would like to call him up, he he barely got his first start. He only got one start in AAA, and he actually got a minor injury in that. So uh, a bit of an early call-up, but he's ready. I mean, based on the ratings, he's he's ready to pitch in the big leagues. I would have loved to just give him more time. Um, so what else? Oh, we got to do the hitters as well. Some good news and some bad news. Sosa's been uh, – power numbers are there. The average numbers have not. His average and on base have been slipping down. It was bound to happen. He wasn't going to be hitting 340 all season. Um, Easily has also been slipping to an extent, but still four win player. I, I did not expect that in his rookie season, especially after he looked overwhelmed in September of last season. Greenwell went through a slump. Seems to be getting under control. Also a four win player. George Pace continuing to slug. He's going to catch Sosa at this pace. Uh, six home runs this month, I believe. Overall now, I mean, he had a horrible first half of the season. So when you look at these numbers after the first half, very happy there. Troy Neal's been amazing for us. He's, his numbers have continued to climb. He's up over three wins. There's Christmas at two wins. Oh, he's been slumping for us a little bit. Larkin gone back into a shell after an amazing July, which is a big part of the, the winning streak. He's been bad again in August. Harvey Pulliam might have been like our MVP in August. He caught, he got really hot. I think he's hitting 400 for the month. Um, and he's an insanely good defensive outfielder. So he's approaching two. Uh, Eddie Murray is now my starting first baseman. I'll explain in a minute. But uh, he's been strong, uh, especially at 35 years of age. And Obando's been really good in his rookie season at center field for us. Bench is doing fine. Manuel Manny Lee's not very good, but I just use him as a defensive replacement second baseman, which is why he's got so many games under his belt. He's only come up to bat 48 times. And the fewer bats he gets, the better. Derek Bell still disappointing, although he did get sent down for a couple of weeks. Call him back up. He's been a little bit better since he got the call back up. So why is Eddie Murray starting at first base? Well... I finally gave up on Mark Grace. I really wanted to call up over Olerud. I couldn't get anything for Grace. Like the only thing I could get, like, was literally like, "Hey, take my injured pitcher with three years left on his contract." No, thank you. Just put him on waivers. He wouldn't accept a minor league assignment, and he got claimed. The Pittsburgh Pirates claimed Mark Grace, and he's only appeared in one game so far. He's been there for a week. Um, went two for four. Good job, Mark. But uh, his, yeah, his tenure with me ended. So why would I, you know, where's Olerud, right? If uh, if Mark Grace is is gone, called him up, started great, hitting 400, and then he got hurt. It's like the one thing I was fearing the entire time. Like I'm gonna call up, I'm gonna call up Olerud and get rid of Grace, and then Olerud's gonna get hurt, and I'm gonna wish I had Grace. Well, I kind of wish I had Grace still, but it is just four to five weeks, so that timetable puts him returning right at the end of the regular season. I'm not even gonna get a chance to give him a rehab. Maybe I can get him in a couple games in in, in October, in early October while the regular season is still going on. It's gonna be a little dicey. And the other thing that made that long month so crazy, there's Kelly's injury that I mentioned, so 12 more months. So 
maybe I'll get him back for the postseason in 1992 if I make it. But Cattare and Dominguez both suffered minor injuries, and when the bullpen was as taxed as mine was, I couldn't wait to see like what the outcome was. So I just put him on the on the injured list immediately. It's funny that it calls it the injured list and not the DL in 1991. Anyway, but they're both healthy again. They fortunately they were both minor injuries, but I still have to wait for them to come off the DL. So hence, welcome Rivero, welcome Fleming. Um, benefit of Fleming is I don't. You know, if, if any of my other pitchers gets injured, Fleming's going to make the postseason roster. So it's even though my bullpen's recovered, I'm leaving him in because today is the day, today and kind of tomorrow, are the days that the postseason roster kind of takes effect. Uh, and then the, the nice thing about having a few minor injuries in here is that I'll have some flexibility to choose my postseason roster from 28 players instead of 25, which I found to be actually can be kind of an advantage. So that's the Rangers. We are going to... Um, we got here? I think that's it. We'll uh, play against the Royals today. Wait a second. Sorry, there was no sound. I was just curious what was going on. All right, we're gonna we got the Royals at home. Pasquale Perez is pitching against Mark Gardner. This is the second game of the series. We were fortunate to beat Randy Johnson yesterday. Beat him like six to five. It was not the game I was expecting. So Perez is our ground ball specialist. So we'll want our best infield in. See what Mark Gardner brings. Heavy, heavy splits. One of the heavier split pitchers, right-handed pitchers that you'll see, which means that we're going to give probably easily the day off to get Backman to line up, although Backman is cold. I'm trying to get him to break that cold streak. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap Troy. Oh, actually, hang on a second. That's not what I wanted to do. We need a righty up there. We're going to put Obando up there second. Then go Pesos and Neil Murray Backman. And I guess we'll get Larkin up a little bit higher in the lineup like that. So we'll hopefully get Backman a few ABs and want him to break this slump before the playoffs arrive. He'll get a bunch of chance, chance to play in September. Once Hopefully I can close out the division and get some rest. Okay, I think this is what we want. Correct, correct. Oop, little delay here. There we go. Okay, this looks really weird. What's going on? I don't know why my stadium looks so funny. Oh, there it goes. Good job, Pasquale. Do a dance. I still want them to add his dances to this game. Hey, Greenwell's going yard. Sweet. Just his seventh of the year, which is fine. He's a leadoff man. Those leadoff homers are so much fun. Let's go in a set the tone in a game. Doing pace, you don't strike out. Well, Sosa's on for free. Oh, Neil's going deep too. Sosa gonna make it all the way around? Sure is. Two zip. We are all over the Royals here. And make it three. Thank you for the wild pitch. Pile it on. Let's knock him out in the first. Christmas is on with a walk. Come on, Barry Larkin, do something for me here. He does, all right, extra bases. This is gonna be a wipeout. Five zip. Let's knock him out in the first. Oh, here's the Cole Backman. Oh, 
Those were all un actually all almost all of them were unearned runs. Because that Sosa got out got on because of that two out error. And that would that cost four more runs. You got two here? Sure do. See you later, Cal. I actually feel kind of bad for this Royals team. Just so many pitching injuries. Not that Gardner would, just, he would he'd be up anyway. So this game isn't the fault of the injuries, but Booz and Schilling earlier in the year. They lost Tommy Green. Pitching is definitely the strength of this team and got gutted. Strike three, you're out. Oh, Sosa tr dropped third strike. Sosa's going to get on every possible way this game. And Neil grounds out. And it's John Rabb, who we talked about, acquired at the deadline. He's got a base hit. Turn two. Nope, we'll get the man at first. Back to the top of the order. And that's a base hit. 5-1. Could be two. Nope. They're gonna score another one. Make it five to two. That was a tough turn for the second baseman. Oh, that's hit pretty deep, but nope, we got it out there. Alright, so it's a ball game again. Let's see if we can pile on the gardener here. Eddie Murray continues the hot hitting since I handed him the first base job. And Christmas is gonna go yard. Okay, I mentioned he hadn't been hitting very well. Not as bad as Willard, but not great. He was inspired to be in public view. Can't get Backman going here. All right, back to a five run lead though. Ripken again. Ripken's 30 now. Speaking of age, George Brett, this could be his last season. He's got a he's got one more year on his deal, but it's a vesting contract. And it's actually looking pretty close whether he's going to hit the plate appearance requirement. So if, uh, it's interesting to see if the AI will pull any tricks. I don't know if it knows how to. But Brett's to the point where He's not worth being the highest played player in baseball. So will they bench him a couple times in September to get rid of his contract? It's kind of a harsh thing to do with a player like George Brett. Pretty slimy, but... Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. All right, Pasquale's in trouble again. That's a base hit. Make it seven to four. Get the bullpen up. That helps. That helps a lot. And then we get Jaha. Big over three from him. He's really the big offensive force. And Neil's on with it in field hit. Haven't seen that too much. Eddie Murray's not exactly fleet of foot. Christmas, another hit on three times already. And they're going to get Larkin. All right, let's see if we can get another inning out of Pasquale here. Got the whole bullpen to play with. And I have a feeling maybe we're going to go to it soon. Even though he's only got 53 pitches, it's, he's getting hammered. out to first, fortunately. All right, we got Gene Larkin. Can we get Rab? Sure do, okay. Pasquale pitches out of it. Gives us six decent innings. Got Cruz through the first three, and then the last three have been pretty dicey. Bobby Thigpen has gone three and two thirds now. They got really good mileage out of him. And Rigetti will complete the 1-2-3 inning. Rigetti was another um, 
trade that they did this season. Strike three, you're out. I think it was before the deadline. But he's been a good arm. Despite the injury, the pitching hasn't been bad for the Royals. All right, that's a good inning from Pasquale. Pretty uninteresting day from George Pace. Sosa's on. Uninteresting day for him too, really. Neil is a victim of a double play. This well's going out for there for the eighth. Interesting choice, not one. Yeah. Manager's call. Uh oh. All right. See you, Pasquale. Hopefully the bullpen can hold this. Oh, here's Mariano. You are witnessing. The early Mariano of hopefully another Hall of Fame career. Beautiful one, two, three inning from him. Love to see it. Do we have an insurance run in us? Christmas is retired for the first time. Larkin's out. All right, going Rivera, going to clear. Clear's been good, but it's been kind of scary. He's always been giving up walks, and there's been no like perfectly clean saves yet. Almost walks in. Almost fly out. Can we get Brown and close this out? Sure do. One, two, three, save from our clear. Whoo! Things were seemingly on cruise control early. But got a little scary there at the end. Gave you guys some entertainment. Pasquale, not his best, but it's his 13th win. Definitely not his best. He's been, I mean, look at that beautiful 3-1-6 ERA, although it was, I think, under three before this game. We got to Gardner early, although it wasn't all his fault. Key error played into that. Our hitting star had to be Steve Christmas, which probably is our player of the game. Sure is. Very nice to see that. Got his average up to 230. Fred McGriff had a strong game for the Royals. I believe he's the one that hit the home run. Yep. And uh, we kept Jaha under control, which is extremely important, along with Calican Jr. and George Brett. Obando, kind of a disappointing 0 for 4. Like I said, Sosa's been quiet. Backman couldn't get him out of that slump. But all in all, a good win against a good team. Let's see what else happened today. Got any interesting news? That was weird. Uh, okay, the... Hey, look at that! I didn't even know that was coming. Congratulations, Pasquale. It was a... It was a rough day, pitching-wise, but congratulations to you with a big career milestone. That's 100 wins. Take a look at your career. That's actually fun. I had no idea that... I, I wish I could say, like, hey, that's, you know, I planned that for this stream. Nope. So... You came up with the Pirates in the early 80s. Uh, kind of did the bullpen thing a bit. Kind of the signal in between the bullpen and the rotation. 83 was completely in the bullpen. And then a young general manager by the name of Rick Meyer traded for you with the Padres and made you a part of the 1984 world champion Padres. Admittedly, you had a rough go at it, but the underlying skills were there and you were a promising pitcher that said i decided to move on from you to get uh who did i get for you i got something good for you i don't remember what it was um might have been like tony pena and might have been Tony, like part of that tony pena deal which ended up being a huge disappointment for me so i shouldn't have traded you but kind of found your home with the Pirates, had a couple of really good seasons with them, particularly in 1985 when he won 16 games. And then 
he hit free agency after the 88 season. I had just finished a horrible season with the Rangers, and he was on the market for cheap. So I snagged him on a one-year deal. His underlying skills were great, but a 346 Babbitt really did him in in 1989. Still won 13 games. Then he hit free agency again, and I somehow decided to bring him back after that very frustrating first year, and he's been amazing the last two seasons. 15 and 6 last year, and 13 and 6 this year. Bringing that win total to 100 against 101 losses. So, all right, Pascal, we'll get you over 500 by the end of the year, hopefully. And hopefully, another ring. So, that's fun. Love the, uh, love the milestones. We already knew the Mariners are, were out of playoff contention. We'll take a look at the other scores. This guy, I don't know who he is, but I feel like this is the second time this week he's had two home runs. It is. He had two home runs against the Twins just four days ago, or three days ago. And then he did it again. Not bad for a pretty boring... He's a first baseman, so he's got power. Can't even play defense there. He got 17 for the season, so okay. Like, I mean, you're good enough for the Indians. That's for sure. No offense, Indians fans. Just, they're terrible. Pedro Gomez. Or, sorry, I always say Pedro Gomez. That's the ESPN announcer. Pedro Munoz of the Reds. Good performance. And then Kreb Nabholz, a six-hit sh shutout of the Oakland A's. So did the Angels lose? No, the Angels win in 10 innings. Lee Smith got the win. Yankees lose. They're continuing to struggle without their ace. Those games don't matter. The Indians beat the White Sox 13-11 to in four innings. How about that? Angels won in 10, as we mentioned. The Red Sox lost, so the Yankees aren't falling any further behind. Cardinals fall behind the Expos even further. A Expos beat the Astros in kind of a good matchup. Did the Padres win? The Padres won. So the races continue to stretch as uh, pretty much I expect to see. So there's your standings. Sorry, I got this volume on a little too high. Copyright free music brought to you through streaming or through Twitch and YouTube now. I was wondering why so many guys were uh, playing music, music and like all this stuff on Twitch about you can't do it. We're going to, you know, you can take, you have to take your streams down. So I was shied away, but apparently they're not apparently like you can do these copyright free music places and uh, have no problems. So that's awesome. Hey, look, Brian Holman's in the top three now of ERA. Someone got <laughs> someone, whoever was third got hit hard because he, I don't think he was there at the beginning of the day. So we're up 11 still. Red Sox stay up five and a half, up to six and four and a half. This is going to be uh, a snooze fest in late September. I think I'll be watching my Oklahoma City 89ers play their playoff games and uh, just playing some young guys. Um, so we're gonna go, what we're gonna do is go to the next day and check out who wins Player of the Month for August. And we're going to call it. And then I'm going to go for a run. Which I will not be streaming. Sorry, guys. I don't think that'd be very exciting. Jim Palmer won the AL Cy Young Award in 1975. Oh, yeah, the other thing that was supposed to happen, a trade might go through. I'm trying to make a waiver trade for, <laughs> for uh, Bruce Suter because my owner wants me to get a Cy Young Award pitcher. There's no way in hell I'm trading for like Kurt Schilling or anyone good. So I'm trying to do a waiver deal for Bruce Suter, who's like at the end. But I timed it so that I could just have him for September call-ups and say, look, owner, I traded for a Cy Young pitcher. I'm so good to you. So let's see. Oh, that's right. We got player development. Who else uh, improved, declined? Darren Hall is uh, has improved nicely in a setup role currently for me. There's Fleming. I saw that earlier. I was kind of part of the call. Like, it's time to call him up. Avery lost a little stamina. Boo-hoo. 
Christmas is going to be on that decline at 33, so that's the risk. Olerud, current contact up to 24, power up to 11, I up to 5. This was basically me saying, okay, that's it. It's time to call up John Olerud. It's, even if, even with those old ratings, you could have like squinted really hard and say, that's kind of a Mark Grace profile. But right as Grace's, uh, Grace came through with some declines, Olerud came through with some upgrades, like, nope, those, those two are no longer anywhere near the same player. It's time. Uh, what else? Derek Bell, not progressing as I would like. Polyam's lost some eye, but he's amazing and one of the he's just an amazing fielder with the the speed he has and the the defense he plays. Another uh, young pitcher that's kind of grown for me this season, Travis Buckley, now in AAA thanks to all my injuries. That three movements probably not going to cut it in the big leagues, but improving a lot of other areas. And these are some of my like lower level guys. Bobby Jones is a good one to watch, still in single A. Probably earns himself a double A call up here pretty soon. Actually, I'll probably call him up to double A now, because September 1st is when I start giving guys some of their I move not just guys up to the big leagues, I gotta start shuffling in behind them. So just control the players in the minors that are like green or blue rating, so of potential. So Everyone else, I just let the AI take care of. Anyway, that's uh, what's cooking. Been scouting some guys. Eddie Williams, Kevin Apier. There's Ventura, who's been hurt for the whole season. I basically just scout guys that are, like, very low. Just in case I want to be uh, um, making trades. William Morrow's got an injury. He's a pretty good reliever. All right, your of the month in the American League is Mo Vaughn. He had a 369 average, five homers, four RBI, 16 runs scored. Not bad. There's a look, a closer look at Mo Vaughn. Just his second season in the big leagues, and first full season, and that's a quite a nice uh, rookie season. I'm not sure if he qualifies as a rookie for this year. If like 330. Plate appearances is enough from last season to qualify him. But uh, I guess we'll find out. At the end of this, it could be... Well, actually, Sosa might be a rookie, too. Well, he spent most, a lot of his rookie year on the DL. But Sosa could qualify as well. But good rookie year for Vaughn. And then Palmero won best hitter in the National League. With 10 home runs, 30 runs driven in, a 448 on base. He's off to a, not off to a, he's been up for a while now. He's got, I think, five years of service. Actually, let's take a peek at his career numbers. Almost approaching 100 homers already. He's already got 22 war this season, 36 home runs. So he's another player chasing Sosa for the home run crown. Keeps getting better and better for the Mets. And I'm just stunned the Mets didn't do better this year. They were kind of my dark house prediction, dark horse prediction for the NL East, but it's just not happening. Pitchers of the month, Jack Armstrong, who was part of the champion Reds, I think. Well, that was 90. I don't know where he... He's probably still with the Reds in 91. 44 innings in that month. 16 walks. I don't know how many strikeouts he had. Didn't say like what wins he had. Well, we can take a look at what he's been doing lately. There's his, that's most of his August. Pretty good. Not that many strikeouts, to be honest. Oh, oh, there, oh sorry, I was wrong. Wrong throw. Nine strikeouts against the Brewers. Picked up three wins, at least three wins. This just picked up in August 11th. He, too, is um, having a nice season, although career-wise, he's been really up and down. I feel like his numbers should be better than this. 657 ERA is quite unfair for someone of his stature, but his FIP heavily supported it this year. Nice breakout campaign, and my goodness, do the Blue Jays need pitching, so he's he's really crucial to them. Although the pitching depth of the Blue Jays is improved thanks to the trade they made with me. Got themselves like a halfway decent fourth and fifth starter. Edward McCarter, who is not a real major leaguer, but is an outstanding ace in this game, is the pitcher of the month in the National League. 
He's been just steady Eddie through his career. I think this is his fourth or fifth season. Actually got him, yeah, I drafted him in 83. Not even, you know, eighth round. We'll see what he did. He, yeah, he, how, where'd he get into it? Yeah, he didn't even make it, make it past A ball in real life. But he's your pitcher of the month for the surging Padres in the AL West. As far as the rookies, hey, oh, Glenn Carter. Wow, this is one of the guys I traded. And he's the rookie rookie pitch, rookie of the month in the American League. So, gosh, I traded him because, hey, extreme fly ball and that movement in my ballpark is not going to play very well. But he's been decent, like 5 ERA overall, 4 FIP. Not bad, and he got smacked around by the Tigers this game. But the last two, a complete game over the Yankees and then beat the beat the Orioles as well. It's kind of a low bar for a player of the month, to be honest. Or sorry, is it rookie of the month? Rookie of the month, still kind of a low bar. Um, I'm guessing, okay, that, I think that answers our question because Mo Vaughn definitely would have won this if he was a rookie. So Mo Vaughn's not a rookie. Um, but Glenn Carter came went in the Troy Neal trade, which Troy Neal's been amazing. So I'll take that trade all day, despite the heavy price I paid in young pitching. Rob Brown. I don't know that name. Yeah, he topped out in AAA for the Oklahoma. Oh, he was a Ranger. He was in the Ranger organization. I think this all looks familiar. This is Gastonia, Port Charlotte, Tulsa, and Oklahoma City. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my system. But here he is a Met, and he's broken through to the to the major leagues. And we we'll go back to that profile, and it looks like he's got a promising career, like kind of a, a good long reliever type. Um, just not like your mop-up middle reliever. Like he's actually going to have some talent. Only two pitches and nine stamina. So that's that kind of locks you in as a middle reliever, long reliever type. So looks like the Mets got themselves another arm with a pretty again a low bar. For, I guess they gave it to him because he had the three wins, 4.40 ERA. Ugh. But you know, I guess it's just low bar for the rookies this year. And then uh, I only won one award. I guess Olerud didn't play enough to win Rookie of the Month. Olerud won Rookie of the Month every single month in the American Association. That's what happens when you're hitting 430. But Brent Cookson, who's my draft pick just this last offseason, showing up pretty well. This part is a bummer, though. He's developing a negative personality. Don't love to see that. But 19 homers for Butte. And then he's got the promotion up to single A now. And sorry, Atlanta, but you are eliminated. You are the second team eliminated, actually. The Mariners were eliminated just yesterday, or two days ago now. And the Braves yesterday had ended for them. Braves just are really hopeless. They've been, you know, we'll take a look at some team history because we'll just keep this stream stretching along. Why not? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Braves. So, since this stream started in 1982, they have yet to finish in the top half of the division. Last, fifth, fifth, almost got 500 in 85. Amazing. And then, sixth, fifth, sixth, fourth. Oh, four, oh, they actually, they, oh, you know what? This is their Pythagorean. <laughs> Missed 500, unfortunately for them due to bad luck. But, yuck. Looks like a franchise maybe I should take over someday, huh? Now that I think about it, the Braves... Well, the Braves, yeah, the Braves had won the World Series. I'd, I like to take over teams. I will eventually leave the Rangers. Um, the Milwaukee Braves in 57 were their, were their championship team. Uh, so, uh, there's teams that have had worse fates. I won't be taking the Red Sox over anymore ever because they won the World Series in 1990. And then for the Mariners, it's been a little better, but not that much unfortunately so they started off the stream in very good shape they had a nice run of form in the early 80s but they couldn't they just couldn't break through the angels had really peaked and the white you know the white Sox won in 82 and then the angels peaked in 83 through like 86 um even in 87 i think the angels were still around so 
nice run, but just always that bridesmaid. And then the last couple of seasons, it's got pretty ugly, and this this is looking like their low point. So they've got a decent minor league system, uh, and Ven Ven got a couple of young players. So I think they'll bounce some, but uh, it's hard to envision them being towards the top of the AL West when they've got this kind of competition to go against. All right, I'm out of stuff to talk about, so it's time for me to go out on that run that I uh, foreshadowed, and my next stream will probably be well, it'll be next weekend sometime. I'm thinking the season will be about over by then, so there won't be much to show if I if if my predictions are correct. There won't be much to show in terms of exciting games, so it may it may just be the beginning of the playoffs that I'm showing. We shall see. I will leave you in suspense. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Please feel free to subscribe and comment and all that fun stuff if you're interested in uh, collaborating a little bit more. And take care of yourself.